guys, I'm Rodin. Welcome to Balmy Spirit. This is going to be the <laughs> intuitive astrology reading. Oh, shit. Hold on. Hold on. That's going to get annoying real fast. Where's Do Not Disturb? Okay, there we go. Ah! Oh my god, the notifications. What the heck? Oh, sorry, guys, I'm trying to get back to you. Give me a second. Oh, good lord. What if I do that? Okay. Oh, I was having all kinds of phone stuff as I kept trying to record this, like all kinds of weird interruptions with my phone. I had to restart it even. So weird stuff. Anyway, this is the weekly intuitive astrology reading for June 13th to June 19th. We got a lot of interesting things going on energetically. Um, on the 13th, we have Mercury moving into Gemini, finally. And on the 14th, we have the full moon in Sagittarius happening at almost 8 a.m. East Coast time. So adjust that according to where you are. Um, those of you watching on YouTube, you can watch the live that I did on Patreon on the 12th. Um, I did the live on the 12th. And it's posted to Vimeo. Sorry, brain fart. It's posted to Vimeo for those who want to watch it. If you want to watch it on Patreon, you can always re-watch it and watch the playback, okay? Um, my patrons are watching this. You're watching it before Sunday, so I'm going live on Sunday to hang out with you guys, okay? Uh, all right, so let's dive in. I go over the astrology first, and then I do channeling, and I pull cards if need be. I almost always pull cards. So this week, that full moon Sag, the full moon Sag, we have when we have full moon, we have the sun and the moon opposing each other. So it's Gemini working um, in tandem with Sagittarius energy. That is all mental, okay? It's very mind-oriented. It's like the lower mind versus like the upper mind, like the higher self even. So this whole week is really about understanding how to move beyond the mind, but how to also work in tandem with your logical brain and the intuitive part of yourself, okay? We've had a lot of stuff happen to us individually and collectively the last month, month and a half. It was very dense with the full moon Scorpio and Mercury retrograde, but those periods of time, the the full moon Scorpio with Mercury retrograde, sorry, I'm kind of scattered today, so just forgive me, um, really brought us face to face with our density, our darkness, our shadow, our darker impulses, our very self-limiting and self-harming programming, um, the emotional baggage that we've been carrying around, and also put us in a state of being lost and very confused in order to face those things. Now, they're still going to play a really interesting role moving forward, especially under the full moon Sag, which is the next full moon cycle, right? Giving us the clarity that we need, but we have this kind of polarity going on this upcoming week, and again, under full moon Sag as well. And it's funny because we're in Gemini season, right? So polarity, and I'll explain why that is later. Um, but that polarity, it's about the balance. It's about the balance. It's about being in the world, not being of it. It's about understanding logic and being able to utilize that part of you for navigating the physical realm, but also staying in tune with the intuitive part of you, your soul, the part of you that wants to have fun and have joy and allowing that to guide you as well and walking both lines, okay? Um, it's interesting. I don't know why this is coming up because I really didn't feel this when I was um, going over my notes and looking at the astrology at play, but that also goes hand in hand with, and this is came up for water signs, I believe, with being rigid and being closed off and protecting yourself versus being open, right? Have an open mind this week. Have an open mind, be receptive, but it doesn't mean you have to be yielding as well. It doesn't mean you have to be submissive. It just means be in your world, not be of it. Take into account all the information and clarity that's coming to you, but don't discount your intuition. Don't discount your lessons. Don't discount the things you have learned along the way. And some of you might realize that it might not be time to be really impulsive and invest a lot of energy and action into one thing in particular, like having a good strategy of looking at everything that's happening and then taking action later might be really good for some of us. And there are things we can certainly take action on now. Sagittarius likes to move, right? Sag likes to move. Sag likes to travel. Sag likes to be all over the place. Um, so I'm not going to say like sit on everything right now while you're getting clarity. Um, but there might be bigger things, more long-term goals that you want to make long-term goals and have little baby goals that you can actually take action on now. 
that also correlates with the Saturn uh, retrograde energy that we are in. We are in this next four month phase that I'm calling implementation phase one. I don't know what else to call it where we're getting ready. It's a preparation, putting logistics into place, which means you have to have a good understanding of a plan and all moving parts of a plan, right? Getting everything in place. And that involves putting little baby steps in play, moving in on action on getting everything in place, right? So for example, if you're building, this is just an example, like building a house, right? This next four months, and again, this this first week is the first week of the next four months. It's the beginning of the phase, right? This next four months is not about let's get the house, right? This next four months is let's understand the house. Let's understand what we want. What do we want it to be made out of? What do we want it to look like? Uh, where do we want it to be? What do we want to do with this house? Like, what is the foundation to be made out of? Um, how's the electrical going to work? How's the plumbing going to work? Let's get blueprints going. Okay, we got the blueprints going. Okay, cool. Um, we need to have like a contractor. We need to have an architect. We need to have a landscaper. Okay, let's call people up. Let's get these people hired. Okay, I like you. I like you. Okay, we got our people. We got our plans. Like, that's the next four months. Okay, it's not getting the house it's getting everything ready to get the house. That's the next four months. So think of it like that. And this is the first week of starting that. So maintain that logical part of you, maintain that intuitive part of you, have fun with it, be creative, get all these ideas, and then use that, that logical part of you to start putting them in place, seeing how it can actually work in the physical. Okay, that's what this first week is about. And the full moon Sagittarius energy will help us to see that better. Will help us to see it better. Okay, especially with Mercury being in Gemini. Now, let's get a little bit more detailed about this week, okay? So aspects, talking about aspects, there's kind of some interesting stuff going on with asteroids that I wanna to touch on that might also bring up some like emotional stuff. But the biggest thing that I wanna talk about in relation to this polarity is the sun. The sun is in Gemini and it is trying Saturn in Aquarius, which Saturn's retrograding, and it is also square Neptune in Pisces. Now, this will also be under the influence of the full moon as well. But this is um, these are two aspects that we have all week. They're peaking on the 16th, both of them, at the same time. It's funny how these things never feel like a coincidence, do they? So the sun, they're very polar opposite energies. With the sun trine Saturn, they're both at air energy. And a positive aspect like this between the sun and Saturn is really good for success. It's really good for achievement. It's really good to sit down with your elders, your mentors, um, your bosses, authority figures, and learn from them, gain knowledge from them. That's a really beautiful energy for that, okay? Um, it's also really good as far as taking on extra responsibility if you want to. It might be a little easier to do that um, with this week. And again, gearing up for the next four months, right? So it's all really positive, really yummy, really juicy, we like it. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, the sun in Gemini square Neptune in Pisces. It literally creates almost like an opposite effect where it's hard to work. We feel kind of lazy, a little lackadaisical. Um, it also leans towards uh, deception and illusions and lying and scandal, especially within relationships. Um, so be, so just be cautious here. So as I was looking at this, I'm like, these are two totally different energies that like almost seem like they could work against each other. But then I realized it's like, oh, it's part of the lesson. It's part of the lesson of being of the logical mind, being of the higher mind, being of the shadow you and the light you, being being open and receptive and loving, but also very discerning, not necessarily guarded, but just aware, right? Aware and looking out for yourself, being of self and also being of others. It's holding both energies at the same time, holding both percep perceptions at the same time, being in a place of unity, being in a place of balance where you're using all these different facets of yourself, right? So it's like, I think I wrote it down here. Where did it go? Where'd you go? I know it. Ah, open minds, discerning hearts, discerning intuition, and self-focus will help you win the day here, okay? The full moon Scorpio and Mercury retrograde showed you the part of yourself that is self-limiting, showed you the parts of yourselves that you have a hard time accepting, shows you the parts of yourselves 
that really just get in the way. And also there's some self-worth stuff going on there. Some of you, it's a battle of power. Some of you, it's a battle of codependency, right? It came in all kinds of different flavors, but it's your own personal darkness, whatever, whatever it is, your own personal self-limiting beliefs, whatever it is. This is being able to be in a boardroom or be in a meeting and you can see where the person can help you, but you can also see where the person can totally take advantage of you and have your discernment about you, have your wits about you, take away from the meeting what you can and don't fall prey to being taken advantage of. It's holding both, okay? That's what's going on this week. That's under the full moon Sag, and it's a really important lesson to have at the beginning of this implementation phase one, okay? So stay strong, you guys got this. Um, an interesting note that I want to make about the following week, about June 20th to the 26th, during that time, Pallas Athena, which is in Taurus, will almost be having like the opposite effect with Neptune and Saturn, which I noticed and I was like, that's really interesting. Um, the following week, Pallas Athena will be square Saturn instead of trine and will be sextile Neptune instead of square. Like, you know, what the sun's doing versus what Pallas Athena is doing. Pallas Athena is very Libra in nature. It likes balance. It likes to problem solve. It likes to be mediator. It also really enjoys wisdom and beauty. It's very Venusian in its nature. And with it being in Taurus, it's a really great balance. It's, it's being able to understand and prioritize uh, long-term stability, long-term goals, long-term foundations. Also, when it comes to money, your personal home, um, even family, again, that long-term sense of security. But it's still Venusian in nature where it's also, it also helps us to understand how to have gratitude and appreciation uh, long-term in a sustainable manner. So that's all Pallas Athena and Taurus. But with it being square Saturn and sextile Neptune, there's almost an emphasis to lean more into the Neptunian energy, to lean more into imagination and creation. You still need to balance it with that Saturn. You still need to balance it with responsibility and diligence and duty and all of that stuff, but you might need to be more, even more reliant on um, your own intuition and emotional body versus what we're dealing with this week where you still need to hold both you need to hold both, but you do need to, not you do need, not that you need to, there's just, you know, there's just advice. It would be beneficial um, to be more in like the inf informational part of everything that's going on this week, like taking in information and uh, truth and clarity and insight and all of that. Like again, the passing on of knowledge, right? Versus the following week with Pallas Athena, it's more like, what do you feel emotionally? What are you intuiting? How can you see this differently from a creative intelligence mindset? So it's very interesting, the juxtaposition of that. We need to hold both, but sometimes we have to lean into one more than the other, depending on the circumstances, right? So just interesting thing to mention there, but that's a, the biggest thing that's happening this week. Now, the other things I do want to mention, let's talk about the asteroids. Mars is in Aries and it is conjunct Chiron in Aries. That's happening this week, and it is, is it exact? Yeah, and on the full moon, on the 14th, it's exact, exact uh, conjunct, conjunction, excuse me, at 15 degrees Aries. When Chiron is working with any planet, it's activating wounding, okay? It's getting us to, to see more about the wounded parts of ourselves. Now with it working with Mars and Aries energy, is it about the self? Yeah, but it's more so about how we assert ourselves in the world, how we lead, how we take action, how we are proactive, um, even about sexuality. So some of the wounding that's coming up, and this will also definitely, definitely be very strong under the full moon Sag, especially as it relates to all this planning stuff that you guys want to do or might get into or start to feel and experience. Again, thinking about the long term, anything long term that you're thinking of this period of time might get triggered under this like need to take action, need to lead, and any sexual wounding that you might have as well. There might be some aggressive and anger issues uh, that kind of come up there as well. So just be mindful that that's at play. I will say with the full moon Sag, um, Orion is playing a big role, the constellation Orion with the star, um, I can never pronounce it, I have it written down here. Al Nilum? Al Nilum? Al Nilum? Al Al Nilum? Al Nilum? Al Nilum? Al Just know the full moon Sag. Um, it is aligning with Orion, the constellation. And 
Orion is really big, it's very significant, but one thing to note about Orion is it is associated with war. So we have this war association, and on top of it, we have Chiron conjunct Mars, bringing up all this wounding around war-like energy of, again, how we take action, how we protect ourselves, how we lead, how we strategize, and of course, the sexual energies is a part of that too, because it's Aries and Mars. Um, so while you are thinking more about your long-term goals, what you want for yourself, and different ways you can start to become more successful and achieve things that you want for yourself, you might get triggered in self-doubt of and being challenged even of how you're doing that. And you might get that from other people. Other people might push back on you. It might even be an illusion. Because again, we have all this, nep this like square Neptune energy. It might even be an illusion that that's happening, even if it's not. So just be aware. It's wounding that comes up, but you don't have to fall prey to it. Just look at it from an observer, detached, emotionally detached standpoint and be like, okay, I see that for what it is. And I see myself for who I am. And since I know who I am, I'm cool. I'm fine. I got this. Okay. Um, Juno. Juno's in Pisces. And this week is sextile Uranus in Taurus. This I actually think is going to create a very kind of funky dynamic as we're all going through changes, right, collectively and individually. And again, this week is about getting clarity and understanding and being focused on long term goals and how to achieve and how to, how to have progress. And these goals are also oriented, I want to add, towards um, anything that can grant us personal freedom and financial freedom and also be of service to others and community. Those are the big things that these long term goals will most likely be circulated around. OK. So here we have Uranus, which is all about personal freedom and breaking away and making change. Sextile Juno. Juno is about marriage and bonds and protection of women in Pisces. So I actually think that this aspect is going to create and destroy bonded relationships. And what I mean by that is marriages, business relationships, um, maybe even for some familial relationships, if you have some kind of financial stuff wrapped up in there or contracts, like family businesses, things like that. So bonded relationships are, are going to be going through pressure to evolve. Now you can destroy and recreate the same relationship, even if it's very different, right? But that's what I think this aspect is going to be bringing in for us. So again, stay aware of what how that's going to look and it's also going to be out of a need for the self out of a need for these kinds of relationships to be different to change or to be atypical or not traditional leave your life come into your life whatever it is it's anchoring some relation bonded relationships which will most likely be new or or reformed or completely destroying them and letting them go okay and obviously it's not gonna affect everybody in that way but it's just the energy that's at play now vesta Vesta's in Pisces. And this week it is square Mercury in Gemini. Um, this aspect actually isn't very strong in the beginning of the week, but by the end of the week on Sunday, it's hella strong. Okay. <laughs> on the 19th, it's going to be like exact, I think, actually. Um, Vesta in Pisces. Vesta is all about sacred desire, sacred desire, sacred purpose, mission work. Um, sometimes you can look at Vesta as, as like a virgin energy. So it doesn't have to do with relationships. It really has to do with the self and your own sense of purpose in your life and what is needed for you and your own self-care. And also Sarah plays a role in that. But anyways, that's what Vesta really is about. When it's in Pisces, it's almost like a review of those things. It can make you really fall into your shadow go into darkness, go into 12th house, Pisces energy, to understand what really makes you happy, what really lights your flame, your sacred flame. And that's something we've all been doing, right? As Vesta has been in Pisces for a while now. But with it being square and Mercury, square Mercury and Gemini, it's, it's again that play of Gemini and Pisces that we have with the sun and Neptune, right? It's that same play of the intuitive mind, the logical mind, the emotional body versus the way we need to exist externally. Um, so there's going to be friction there. There's going to be friction there. You might even feel pressure from people around you as you are understanding what makes you happy and what your personal needs are to have your sacred flame lit, right? You might get pushed back. So be mindful that friendships, acquaintances, 
they might make you feel suffocated or even frustrated. You might feel very drained around people sometimes. Um, it's going to be very person dependent, but just know that there might be some friction there from the external world and some pressure to not be so focused on yourself, but this is a time to be focused on yourself. So don't forget that. Okay. So that's what's really going on this week. Um, and like I said, for the full moon Sag, um, that's all that same energy too under this full moon Sagittarius energy uh, period of time, excuse me. So don't lose sight of what's best for you. Don't lose sight of what you've learned about yourself in these in these last like four to six weeks, the darkness that you faced and how to hold all parts of yourself, how to stay in that place of balance and connection and unity where you can be of the light, but you can also be of your shadow. You can be empowered and you can look out for yourself and you don't have to hurt people in the process, but you can also um, gain knowledge from people in the process at the same time. It's not manipulative. It's just being in the world and not being of it, uh, being involved in relationships, but not letting them overtake you. Hold both. Hold all ways of being at this time, okay? Um, now, as far as signs and degree ranges for how this can affect you, didn't I write these down? Didn't I write these down? Hold on a second. <laughs> Give me a second, guys. I, oh, I did. Okay. I was like, I wrote them on another page. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. So for this like whole polarizing energy of learning and working with mentors and elders and authority figures and gaining success in that way and establishing more responsibility with, with more ease and all of that, um, well, also not getting so overcome by your emotional body, but allowing intuition and emotions to to still have you centered and to still help you like steer in the right way of what really is best for you and what's really going to make you happy. Um, we're going to look at, excuse me, um, we'll say 20 to 25. Yeah. Yeah. 20 to 25 degrees Gemini. Gemini. I'd really look at Gemini very closely for that. I would also look to Aquarius and Pisces as the polarizing effects. So wherever you have 20 to 25 degrees, 20 to 20, 20 to 25 degrees Aquarius, um, that's going to be more like the logical influence. It's going to be more of the logical, relational, like relationship wise, uh, sort of influence that plays into all of that. It's also where you're going to have more of like your goal oriented energy. Pisces is going to be a little shadowy. Pisces is like still going to help you. So don't totally discount your intuition and your emotions and what all that's been telling you. But don't get sucked into Pisces. Don't get too sucked into it this week. Let it help you. Just don't get sucked in. Okay. Um, try and see how that would play out. Let me think of my own chart as an example. So Pisces for me would be work, which is kind of interesting because I'm always goal oriented energy. And Aquarius is my 8th house. So 8th house versus 10th house. So 10th house for me, it's going to help me as far as keeping in tune with like what I know intuitively and emotionally and how I'm feeling. Um, but if I get too sucked into that, I can get speared off course. I can miss out on valuable information and valuable progress and valuable help right, where that could be coming more from the eighth house for me. So that could be coming by, which is interesting, that would come from my eighth house is where I might be getting more like progress and help and assistance. Hmm. Um, how would that work in the eighth house? Let me think about that. I would say for me, that'd be unconventional help. So actually getting help and knowledge from uh individuals that might be more like people i might not really deal with on a regular basis or might even have some personal biases towards because it's eighth house energy but that could also be like occult and mystical so that might actually help me in my own business <laughs> um but gemini right gemini is where we're holding both of these different polarities gemini is where we're going to be having also the progress right and that's going to be my 12th house this is, this is going to be really funky. This, this is going to be a funky week for Cancer Risings because it's like all of the energies, like for example, like Pisces, if you're Cancer Rising and it's like the Pisces little shadowy, that's 12th house energy, that's actually going to be in your 10th house, which is like your legacy and your long-term stuff, right? So that's kind of funky. Uh, I hope that was a good explanation. That probably was not. Um, hold both polarities. 
think about the long term think about what you want what your personal freedoms are all those things and let people help you just hold on to your discernment hold on to your discernment hold on to what you know and allow your intuition to help you but just don't allow yourself to be taken advantage of and totally succumb to any extremes right now observe be receptive be open attain information and and see what happens see how things play out okay that's like that's the best way for me to explain that now aries um it's kind of idling at 15 degrees we'll say 15 to 20 15 to 20 degrees aries is where we might have some triggering around how we like around self-doubt about how we assert ourselves if people feel threatened by that or if they don't allow us to assert ourselves any sexual wounding might come up there there's gonna be a lot of orion energies around these triggers because of the way the full moon is is working with these aspects um so i would look to aries 10 to 15 degrees that might be a little triggery for you um 15 to 20 degrees excuse me 15 to 20 degrees that might be kind of triggering for you during this week but also very helpful for your personal growth as far as no you can be a leader you can take action you can be assertive in your own life as you need to the masculine part of you all right um now vesta vesta working with mercury with that pisces gemini it's kind of that same flavor like I said, of the sun being square Neptune, where Pisces is where we have like the pull of the shadow, the pull of illusion, where again, it has an importance. So allow yourself to be creative and intuitive and hold on to your faith, but don't take it to such an extreme. Stay rational, stay a little logical, okay? Um, yeah. And with Gemini, yeah, it's the same. It's the same as, as it would work for the sun with the ne with Neptune. Um, but they're early degrees. It's like zero to five degrees for Pisces and Gemini for this. Um, yeah. 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 Maintain the importance of personal time and personal space, don't get sucked into it. That's what I just wanted to tune into that and just channel. Um, don't get sucked into having so much personal time that you miss out on opportunities to learn from other people, but also don't give in so much to other people that you're not giving yourself your, your own needs. You see what I'm saying? That's what this whole week is about, holding the two different polarities. Um, now Juno and, and Uranus, this is where we're seeing the creation and breaking of bonds the refor reformation of bonded relationships. This is going to be um, a big Taurus influence. They're both staying 16 to 17 degrees, so I'd look at that. But I would even go as far as looking at 15 to 20 degrees uh, Taurus for this as well, for creating and breaking the bonds. Again, Juno's in Pisces, that shadow, that shadowy energy. Um, I really feel like it's Taurus though, doing the driving of where the creating and breaking of the bonds is happening. So look to Taurus for that. This is going to be a week for my Cancer Risings. Okay. Okay. Enough astrology. Let's go ahead and pull some cards. I apologize if I got a little redundant there. Um, but, you know, when you got to hold both polarities and all, all the different, like, facets of truth at the same time, it can get a little funky, right? We're talking about both sides, but they're the same. <laughs> right? Mm. Okay. 13th to the 19th, 13th to the 19th. Just getting grounded first. We, they're bringing up this Orion, War, Aries, Chiron energy. Um, you guys already know not to get sucked into people's bullshit. <laughs> You already know. You already know not to get sucked into baiting too much. It doesn't mean that you need to back down. It doesn't mean that you need to give in and compromise um, the things that you need to do for yourself. Like you, you just you just don't need to do that. Um, that full moon Sag too. Sag energy can be a little blunt. It can be a little ballsy. So be mindful to not like give into being super blunt be honest be honest but you can still again holding both polarities um you can still have compassion you can still have compassion for people and you can speak your truth 
this is a week, thank you, this is a week of really, really, really needing to speak your truth. But again, in a balanced way, with compassion and love and with confidence and uh, a sense of, of having a lot of, um, I'm keeping getting the word reassurance, which is like not the right word, but that's the word that's coming through, um, a lot of strength, a lot of personal strength and personal power behind it, right? And it's not that you are tearing anybody down, you're just being you and you're being honest and you're not compromising yourself for that, for anyone else. You're not compromising yourself for other people. Also allow for, this is all about balance. So like everything I'm saying, I'm just like, yeah, this is just like, like overly emphasizing the importance of needing to allocate time and energy to all different facets of your life this week. It's really important for the next four months as you are kind of working out your long-term goals and, excuse me, understanding how to achieve these long-term goals for personal freedom, financial freedom, and being of service to other people. It's really important to really set a strong foundation that's why it's so important to have these four months to do this and to make sure you are doing like going over everything um, in a thorough way um, with balance in your own life because you need a really, really, really strong foundation for things that are meant to last forever or things that are meant to last decades or the rest of your life or for seven generations of being of service to other people, right? The importance of a really well-balanced life will make for really well-balanced and sustainable achievements and projects and relationships and things like that, okay? Okay, all right, I wanna pull cards. There's kind of a seriousness to this energy all of a sudden that, I, to be honest, I'm, it's kind of feeling like a drag. I'm not really liking it. Um, so I wanna go ahead and pull some cards. Where are we gonna start? We're gonna start the animals, the wild unknown spirit animal deck. Travel is going to be really beneficial for the next couple weeks. Um, yeah, it's going to be really beneficial for the next couple weeks. For those of you where you can swing it resource-wise, again, balance both. <laughs> balance joy, emotions, intuition, and all of that. The, the non-physical parts of ourselves and the emotional parts of ourselves with logical, rational, and responsible. <laughs> Earthly, water and earth, balance both of them. Actually, it's more like air, but balance them, balance them, balance them. If you can swing a trip, especially one where you're learning, where the goal, the intention is to learn, to attain knowledge, to attain wisdom, to attain clarity, do it, do it. It'll be very beneficial. These cards are flying all over the place. Hold on a second. Okay. Any messages or insights for this upcoming week? Mmm. Buffalo. I, I feel strong knowledge behind this i feel i feel like a tower moment that provides information and clarity that's what i'm feeling behind the buffalo buffalo is a very auspicious sign where it's it's the turn of a new age okay it's the turn of a new era that could be very beneficial for anybody who's been suffering you can look at it that way um but i just feel i feel like just a sudden moment a sudden shift like like a tower like i'm really feeling that energy a towers don't necessarily destroy Tower moments are unexpected events that cause change, okay? Sometimes that involves destru destruction, but sometimes it also just involves adding something to reshape it, to reform it, to see it in a different way. But I'm feeling a sudden event, a sudden shift, a sudden change, and I feel like it's providing so much knowledge and clarity is really what I'm feeling with the buffalo. It feels really positive. Any other messages or insights for the collective for this week? Ooh. Oh. Mm. So we have the mouse. Mousy mouse. Mouse is a little anxious. Mouse energy r runs on anxiety. Uh, and then we have snake, 
with black egg. What is going on here? It's almost, I'm feeling a little stunned. Like it's funny because this feels kind of like that, like being hit suddenly unexpectedly. And this is like the rattled like aftermath. Like it's how it feels like blah, 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 blah. Um, it, it really feels like that. Hopefully nobody has any car accidents. I'm not trying to manifest that, but that's like almost how it feels. Like if you get into a really bad car accident, you're, you're kind of rattled, like your nervous system's kind of rattled. You feel that reverberation through your body. That's really what I'm feeling here with this mouse energy with the snake and black egg. Black egg is a throat chakra card. It's saying that there's something that needs to be expressed. Something needs to be expressed. And, and this feels like a bomb. So I literally got the word bomb. So the snake energy feels like a bomb. It's, it's like, it's a bomb of energy. It's interesting because I feel fire with it. I feel like a bomb of fire, a bomb of life, a, like a blast, like a blast of energy. Some of you guys might be getting blasted with downloads. Um, it's like I can't contain it. it can't, this, this energy can't be contained. So whatever big change is coming in here or big sudden event is happening for a lot of you, it is providing knowledge and clarity, but also it's providing this almost like a ticking time bomb of expression. <laughs> like it needs to come out. It needs to come out <laughs> like, like whatever like whatever this is lights the fuse lights the ticking time bomb fuse of something that you just need to say um many things you need to say many things you need to say the snake also speaks of untapped potential sometimes even speaks of kundalini energy in this deck i'm trying to tune into that to see if that's present here This feels more like that Mars energy to me. And again, it's that fire. I keep on fire with the snake here. Uh, this feels more like the Mars energy to me, where there's like there's a need to take a stand almost for yourself to be assertive. Not necessarily take a stand, it's to be assertive. This is be assertive with your voice. The mouse also tells me that it's like speaking on something or to someone or about something or in a way that normally really rattles you. And I think it's still rattling you but it's time to be courageous and do it anyway. Yeah, it's time to be courageous and say it anyway. It's, I feel like it's almost a battling with your own programming of like, this is something I just can't say, or this is something I can never say to this specific person, or it's just something that I just can't do. It's something you have to do. Whatever this event is, it's prompting this. It's prompting this, this little verbal explosion. Um, and it is actually very empowering. I'm also feeling that it's very empowering. And I think it's actually gonna go better than you think it will. Whatever the anxieties that are, it's from programming. Um, it's gonna go better than you think it will. It's gonna help you assert your power and help you to realize it's okay to assert your power. Mm. Wow, all right. What the heck just happened here? Okay. Any other messages or insights for this week for the collective? Okay, card vomiting everywhere. Am I taking these? Oh. Oh. Wow, we got the swan with the moth. Swan is a unified energy. You can see the mirroring there, right? Swan is being very in tune and connected to all facets of yourself, the polarities of yourself, the dark and the light. Also can speak of partnerships. Remember what I said, this period of time we're in, under the full moon Sag, but also this week especially, um, the creating and destroying of bonded relationships. And again, what I mean by bonded, there's something bonding you together. It's not just about the emotions you feel for each other. It's like there's a contract, there's a business, you got kids, you're married, like something like that. Bonded relationships. And moth is attraction. It's, it's, it's a magnetic energy moth to a flame. That's why we look at the moth that way. Moth could also speak of uh, needing to let go of control and surrender and just letting things flow. Doing this, self-expression ticking time bomb, it's gonna be very empowering for you. It's gonna help you to feel more cemented and being connected with all facets of yourself and being able to hold both polarities at the same time. Um, and it's going to attract a lot of people to you. It could even be attracting a person to you. These two cards coming out together, I do strongly want to say there is 
um, a coming together of bonded relationships for some of you. That's not gonna be for all of you. Some of you are, it's gonna be about destroying them, okay? Or resh reshaping them even. But some of you, it is about attracting them in and pulling them in, okay? Um, sorry, got a big influx of energy there for a second. Be bold, be bold, be brave, be confident, be loving and compassionate at the same time. And be honest and it's gonna pay off and it will surprise you. Let's keep going. This is a time if you hold one extreme and not, you know, both polarities or all these different facets of yourself, this can be a time of struggle, okay? And challenge. Mm. Wow, more throat chakra energy. Okay. Nightingale and the bee. <laughs> literally these two cards together using your voice now do you see how he's like singing and speaking and preaching using your voice being expressive is a big payoff that's literally what this is saying with the b it's it's efforts that that lead to results that lead to achievements um well-deserved achievements and it's all around the throat it's all around expression it's all around being honest and communicating wow very interesting Especially when it comes to being honest about where you want to put your work and effort into. So the goals that we were talking about, right? Being goal oriented um, and anything that you're learning along the way. Like a lot of you might actually find that you need to go and get information directly from people to understand how to shape your goals, how to shape, how to go for certain things or what things need to look like. Uh, doing that is going to be a big payoff. Okay. Big, big payoff. Oh, strange combination. <laughs> I just heard strange bedfellows. Uh, is this a time of strange bedfellows? My guide said energetically, yeah. I don't know how to interpret that. Energetically, this is a time of strange bedfellows. Oh, weird energies working together. Okay, interesting. Anyway, so now we have scorpion with beaver. Beaver is work. Beaver is very Taurus Virgo energy. It's like, it's consistent, diligent work, 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 work. Um, but Beaver also works for other people, like for families. Um, it is a service of, of is a service to others sort of energy, but with Scorpio coming in here, there's a little bit of a resentment. This is learning to work differently. This is learning to understand that emotionally you need to put your efforts in, in um, exercise your efforts and energy in different ways that you're not used to, right? Whatever you you build, the intention around it might need to be different. The intentions you've had around how you've invested your energy and time into people and projects and work has left you a little resentful. It's left you probably not caring for yourself enough it's left you probably with some pains and resentments that you've just tried to push away, which instead of pushing away now, you're you're owning them. You're being very honest. You're being very honest about that, and you are allowing this integration to happen. So be mindful of your triggers, and if you are resentful of how you have invested your time and energy into people or projects or work in a way, and consistently in a way that really is not good for you. Wow. Overall... We got the frog. Cleanse, cleanse, cleanse. Release, 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 release. Full moons are a great time to release and cleanse um, and destroy bonded relationships. Oh, that's funny. That's funny that keeps coming up. Some of you, this is going to be family. It's going to keep it real with you. Some of you, it's going to be needing to really break away from family bonded relationships. But it's all starting with the buffalo. It's all starting with the buffalo whatever event, tower moment, could even be information or news that gives you this knowledge that feels like a tower, is going to facilitate this level of honest expression, saying things to the certain people that you've always had a hard time, time doing so, the anxiety you felt with that, just finally being really honest 
and it's going to pay off. It's going to pay off and it's going to help you to release and it's going to be very healing. Wow. Okay. So much going on here this week. Uh, moving on, let's go ahead and pull some other cards. This is a long video. We're already at 45 minutes. Um, I guess I had a lot to say. <laughs> Full moon. We're going to go with the runic tarot. Runic tarot? Yes. Any other messages or insights for the collective for this week? Any other messages or insights for the collective for this week? Wow. <laughs> wow. We have King of Wands with Empress and Temperance. Talk about holding two different polarities at the same time, Empress and King of Wands. Some of you guys um, are going to be having a rebalancing uh, resolution, creating breaking bonds, right, uh, between an Empress and King of Wands energy. So King of Wands is somebody who's kind of boss-like, leader-like. Uh, they can be somebody who likes to be the center of attention, is the spotlight person. Uh, they will start things even if they need other people to finish them. That's a King of Wands energy. Empress, you guys know the Empress. The Empress is a matriarchal energy. It's somebody who has had a lot of lessons when it comes to feminine energy, how to nurture, how to care, how to heal. Um, all the queens, right? Also very intuitive. It's also an energy that is all about growth and nurturing and abundance and manifestation. Um, very goddess-like. Very, very goddess-like. You get, mm, thank you. Um, holding both of these within yourself is also is a big part of this as well. Can you can you hold on to this Empress energy, the loving, compassionate mother, right? While also being this very assertive, confident, responsible leader, father like energy. But this is about fire. This is about how to get things started, how to initiate, being that very forceful energy but still at the same time having the softness of the Empress. Can you hold both? Can you hold both right now? It's very serious, but still soft and human, very human and loving at the same time. Can you hold both? I know you can. Um, but like I said, this might also manifest in your physical reality as far as also um, working out things between a king of wands as an empress or between it or with an empress as a king of wands energy that could also definitely be between be parental figures empress's mother king of wands is also seen as the father sometimes or the boss sometimes um with your own parents or also with someone you co-parent with um also romantically speaking yes that could be there okay i feel the tower around this I feel the catalyst around this 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 set here, which is interesting. How does that get started? How does that get catalyzed? For those where you're dealing with another person in this energy, it's obviously going to be through a conversation. Is going to be the the ooh, the catalyst. Um, we'll see if anything else comes up for that, but I feel the catalyst uh, sets things up to get here. Okay. Let's keep going. Any other messages or insights for this week? For the collective? I don't even know what to call this reading. <laughs> wow. Beautiful. We have the Fool, which I look at as Aries energy, and the Queen of Cups. Being able to move forward, being able to start new projects, new things, being light and being free of baggage, being able to take risks, but again, still having that emotional that emotional part of you. Um, wow. This is having a lot of faith. This is having a lot of faith um, with moving forward to wherever you need to move forward into. Having a lot of faith in doing things differently. It's 
a lot of healing behind this as well. There's a lot of healing behind this. So with any expression of communication, of again, things that you need to say, things that are hard normally to say that leads you to a, this level of empowerment, this level of being unified with yourself, being able to hold these energies at the same time, it's going to be very healing for you and it's going to allow you to be lighter and more free. Cleanse. Um, and continue. Move on into new horizons, move on into the unknown with a stronger sense of faith. And with an open heart. Still practice your discernment, but with an open heart. Let's keep going. Any other messages or insights for this upcoming week? Yes, yes, yes. We got the Eight of Wands. We love the Eight of Wands. Unstoppable movement. Again, traveling can be very beneficial for those of you looking to learn, get clarity. Um, I just heard teach really loud. Sorry. Um, ooh. Talk about that in a second. Traveling can be very beneficial, but Eight of Wands is unstoppable movement forward. Okay. A lot of forward movement going on here. A lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, Eight of Wands could also be a lot of communication and a lot of mingling. Again, balance that with any needs you have to take care of yourself, okay? But this week is just about holding the two polarities in a balanced way so you could have progression towards achievement and long-term goals. Overall, we have the Ten of Swords. Feel the tower around there. We have Ten of Swords, Four of Swords, Page of Cups, death and then two of wands beautiful with the wheel of fortune and the ten of cups Ooh, and the king of cups oh my all right well i'll get to skip that in a second let's go over this overall energy this is the overall energy ten of swords endings 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 um, some of you have already had these endings. Some of you, that's what the buffalo is representing. Some sort of ending uh, that comes in. But you immediately get the Four of Swords, which is clarity. It's clarity. It's recovery. The Ten and the Four also make the Six, which is peace of mind and understanding in order to move forward. So you see what I'm saying? This, this tower, this big event, this unexpected event, whatever it is, when it comes in, whether it's a conversation or some kind of external event to you, it gives you knowledge. It gives you clarity and it allows you to have forward movement. It allows you to be able to start establishing long-term goals and new goals for yourself or reforming um, things that you want to bring into your life, new path, cultivating new paths is what I just heard. It allows you to do that. And yes, there is definitely a need to be honest and express yourself in ways that you have not previously or have had trouble doing so. And it's going to allow you this new level of empowerment and realize it is okay and you can speak on these things um, and you can be firm and you can be assertive, but you can still be soft and compassionate and accepting, right? Accept and other people can accept you. Underneath the Four of Swords, we have the Page of Cups. Page of Cups with death and the Two of Wands. That Page of Cups and death definitely feels like a conversation, doesn't it? It definitely feels like a conversation or some sort of emotional, I'm getting acceptance, um, some sort of emotional acceptance of a change, of a shift of what is possible. Especially with the Two of Wands being there, right? Because Two of Wands with the death card, that's, that's being able to be on a new path. Be on a new path or make a pivot or make a choice um, that can set you up long term because it's two. It's the two of ones. It's new. It's a relatively new path that you are pivoting onto, that you are shifting onto. That's allowed you to step into this more united, more well-rounded, more balanced way of being where you're holding all these different parts of you at the same time and expressing them at the same time. It's moving much more into a truer unity of yourself. Again, where you can be masculine and feminine at the same time, you can be strong and confident and assertive at the same time as well as, well as being compassionate and gentle. 
and it's very healing and it's allowing you to move forward in a way we have a lot of trust and a lot of faith and you're going to be unstoppable in this forward movement so i know i've been saying a lot and i know it's also been a little scattered so i apologize um this is going to manifest in all different kinds of ways for all of you okay underneath the two of wands we also have this wheel of fortune with the ten of cups and the king of cups don't forget you also have the queen of cups here some of you are breaking bonds some of you are creating bonds some of you this event and you speaking your truth and moving into this like more united empowered sense of you is setting you up on a path to 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 attract in people who are like you who are more evolved and united within themselves like you okay oh so whether you're parting from king of cups energy you're embracing king of cups energy in the form of other people in your life you are a much stronger more developed more defined sense of a person okay i know it's a lot uh let's go ahead and pull advice do we need advice it's like we don't need advice but we'll pull advice um let's do the spell casting deck i'm feeling so lightheaded right now like i need to go lay down advice 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 can i get any advice please for the collective for the spread advice mm. courage be brave be bold be courageous um and loving and gentle at the same time and then we have protection Again, this whole holding these all these different parts of yourself at the same time, holding the polarities at the same time, different polarities at the same time. You can look out for yourself. You can be assertive and all of that. Um, and it's not a bad thing, right? It doesn't mean you're mean. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. You are just looking out for yourself and your best interests, and there's nothing wrong with that. And it also doesn't mean that it has to hurt other people. Let's see what else comes out. I'm probably going to read these to you as well. Nice. And then we have prosperity, which is beautiful. Staying on this track, staying on course. Again, being honest, being balanced within yourself. Um, not living in extremes of extreme spiritualism and intuition or extreme logical mental mind and the physical you got to be in the middle you got to be in the middle here um and be brave and be bold at the same time and honest at the same time and it's going to seriously pay off here with prosperity it's going to really really pay off um, i'm going to read courage that's the only one i'm going to read Your extreme aversion to something that's plagued you for most of your life is causing you to become irrational. An overwhelming and debilitating fear has a significant impact at even the thought of coming face to face with your antagonistic per perpetrator. Avoidance and an exaggerated, unrealistic sense of danger has led to restrictions and increased your anxiety. Tracking back to the original source of a phobia will help you to understand your triggers and intense psychological reactions in order to heal. With courage and a little banishment magic, you can find complete peace of mind. Your fears relate to a past life. Your sensitivity is comprised by another's phobia. Understanding is key to heal. You're safe and protected. You're safe and protected. That also feels a lot of like the Chiron Mars Aries energy right there. It feels a lot like that. And like I said, that's going to be triggered. All around how you take action, how you are assertive, how you can be a leader and of course any sexual issues that you have um, or sexual wounding not issues sexual wounding that you have might be triggered this week and under the full moon sagittarius but it's to get you to see that you can be a leader you can be assertive you can be strong you can be the king of wands you can be that and it's totally okay you can you can still be loved at the same time all right um so maybe you guys might have to also face um personal biases or traumas around men that just came in really strong after I said that. 
like father figures, uncles, brothers, um, male bosses. I'm actually hearing coaches. That's interesting. Male coaches. I don't know why that's a thing. Um, but some of you have had some trauma with male figures and uh, it might really highlight that to you this week. Like any kind of tower moments or unexpected events um, might really trigger that for you, but it's to get you to move past it so you can be stronger and more confident in yourself. Okay. All right. An hour exactly as I said that. Uh, I'm going to go and I hope you guys have a really great week and a great night. Don't forget to check out Patreon and Vimeo. Um, I know this reading was a lot and it's like, I, even for myself, like now that I'm like at the end of it, I'm like, oh, so many layers to this and so many ways this can manifest for all of you guys. But um, I hope it was helpful. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Take care.